Hello? Okay. Okay, it's starting. Um, hey, everyone. So we're going to be doing another podcast talking about the Batman. I mean, what else would we be talking about? There's a bunch else that's going on. But anyways, yeah, we're going to discuss the Batman. Should you, like, introduce yourself? Well, remember, I'm Gen X. Okay. And then Gen Z. It's just this, it's this weird gimmick that we have. <laughs> um, Different perspectives, different generations, yeah. one movie. Basically, yeah. <laughs> so t- so what's interesting is this movie, I think the trailer came out last year in the summer. Not it was either that it was like twenty twenty, right? In I think August. So. Like they had like the first twenty one? Twenty twenty one? It was either twenty twenty one or it was like because like there was DC fandom, right? And they decided to, you know, have that. And they released the Batman show. I can't remember if it was 2020 or 2021. It was one of the two. I think it was 2021 because I feel like 2020 is way too early to have that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it came out. It was announced a long time ago. It was announced, like, I think, in, like, the summer of 2021. Like, there was, like, reveals, the Batmobile and whatever. Um, and, yeah, here we are now where... And at that time, people were probably pretty skeptical. Do we oh. need another Batman movie? Yeah. No, I don't think it was that. I think it was the fact that Robert Pattinson... <laughs> that as well. Do we need another Batman movie? Do we need a Batman movie with Robert Pattinson as yeah. Bruce Wayne? And it wasn't just Robert Pattinson people were complaining about. People were questioning the entire cast. Because, oh. like, they none of them seemed to fit their roles at all. Mm. Like, the only one that seemed to, like, fit the roles like, Matt Reeves. Mm. Because I think, like, Matt Reeves doing a Batman movie seems, in a way, kind of perfect. Okay. So So they question the other actors. Yeah. Colin Farrell as the Penguin did not seem like it fit. Yeah, Paul Dano as the Riddler and stuff. I don't really... These are actors I've seen very little from, so I didn't know what to think about that. All I knew was that Robert Pattinson was from Twilight, and that's Twilight, and this is the Batman. Very different movies. Exactly. So... I mean, there's that. I didn't see him in the light. I haven't seen him in the lighthouse, and I didn't see it at that time, so I didn't know exactly how great of an actor he was. I th- I saw Good Time though, like about a couple weeks before it came yeah, out. Yeah, we saw that. Yeah, and it made me excited in a way for the Batman, even though they're very different movies. Mm-hmm. But I mean, should we just get started with talking about the actual film? Sure. Well, what do we even start? How, how do we even like you know start this at all? Uh, I guess first give your general review. Like, what did you think? I mean, I put out a vid- video essay on it. You guys probably know most of my opinions, but I mean, I loved it. I think it's the best Batman movie. I wouldn't say it's better made than The Dark Knight, or even like a, my. I I wouldn't say it's my favorite movie over The Dark Knight, but it's such a great. How like it's just such a great movie, and I don't know where I'd put it on my favorites list. It's a five out of five, and. Most of those are in my top 50, but I don't know where I'd put it, you know, because it's just su- it's something that's like, I-, I think I need to like, you know, sit down, maybe more, think about it more. Maybe I shouldn't release the video essay so soon, mm. but it's just a movie that I really have to think about, you know, I think a second rewatch would like, you know, you know, have me even like understand even more how much I love it. Hmm. See, to me, it is my favorite Batman movie, Mm -hmm. and I like it better, I'll say it, than The Dark Knight. Mm -hmm. Um, I think The Dark Knight has some elements in it that are exceptional. Obviously, the Joker is exceptional. Mm -hmm. But to me, the rest of the movie kind of falls short, and I've said this before, I don't think the movie ends that well. I think there's a point in the movie where they could have ended The Dark Knight with you know uh, elements involving the Joker, and that would have been satisfying. I think they got a little bit too ambitious to move forward into what almost seemed to me, just to me, Mm. like another plot line with Two-Face. And I know it was set up, but it just seemed like they were reaching too far. Whereas I think the Batman, even though it's three hours, it's one complete story that holds together really well. The thing is, though, the point with like the whole with Harvey Dent becoming Two-Face, it wasn't forced. It was like for Joker to like make a point. You know? Yeah, that he could make anyone or anyone could become like him. Is that the point? Yeah. Well, I, I get it. It just didn't work for me in the movie. I felt like mm. when the Joker exited the movie, the movie went in a different direction and one that honestly, I just could have lived without. I understand mm. the reason why. 
but it just didn't seem like it worked for me. But yeah, talking about the Batman, this <laughs> yeah, it, this movie feels like probably the closest we have gotten. Like I guess beyond like I don't know the Lego Batman movie, Mask of the Phantasm, and such where we actually have a movie about Batman. Because as much as I like The Dark Knight, it's just as much about the Joker, maybe even more, th- than it is about, you know, Batman. Mm-hmm. But in this movie, we see more of Robert Pattinson. We see more of his character. And I think he is probably the best Bruce Wayne in Batman. Well, what I liked about him is that he's still a Bruce Wayne and a Batman trying to figure things out. Mm-hmm. He doesn't have all the answers. Mm-hmm. He doesn't know exactly what to do. And I think that makes it interesting. And he's still wrestling with, you know, what he's become. And I, I like seeing that. There's some internal struggle from that character um, that really helps me connect to him. And I agree with you. He is my favorite Batman or favorite Bruce Wayne, however you want to say it, uh, because yeah. of those reasons. Yeah. I mean, I'd say he's my favorite live action Bruce Wayne, you know, not exactly, I'd say. I mean, there's like TV shows and such, but those are different and different and things entirely. But my point is, this is just, it's something that it's like, it's hard to explain really how truly good it is unless you really like have watched it. Mm-hmm. Well, you know? I think you said something about this Batman and Bruce Wayne that I think is important that in the other Batman movies, you know, Batman appears and he's there for like 30 seconds and then he's gone and then mm-hmm. it's a Bruce Wayne movie. And I think there were good reasons for doing that. Mm -hmm. But I think this one takes the opposite strategy where you've got Batman in there interacting with other characters a lot. And it's different. And the way they do it just, I don't know, makes a really good movie. The way he interacts with the police, with other characters, just makes it really interesting because you get to see more of how society views him Mm -hmm. because he's interacting with them constantly. Yeah. And – Another thing is, like, the whole idea of, like, like, I don't know, Gotham felt more like a connected city than it did in other Batman movies. Like, it felt like more of, like, you know, an entire city where everything's tied together and such. Like, the whole Wayne's idea and philosophy, like, the, like that whole thing, like, in the fact that Catwoman brings it up, shows, like, how tied together Gotham is. I agree. This felt like the most complete Gotham and it didn't feel like New York or Chicago. It no. felt like its own unique yeah. place. Like, I love the Nolan movies, but, I mean, I felt l- like, let's be honest when we talk, when we say this, Christopher Nolan's Batman, like the Gotham, it did kind of feel like New York. It did. Okay, now. Okay. So you were saying Nolan's Gotham is kind of like New York? Yeah, I mean, in a way it is. I feel like a city like, not really Chicago, but like, you know, those big, massive cities that are like, I I guess, not really California, but like, you know, cities like New York. Yeah, and I feel like the original Batman was kind of like Chicago or New York as well. Uh, No, no. To me it was. 89? Yeah. No. Have you ever even been to Chicago? Well, I mean, it doesn't look anything... It do, it looks like Gotham City. I think it's, like, the second closest to how, like, a unique-looking, like, closest... Probably the closest to the comics. Well, anyway. you might feel that way, but I don't necessarily... They have like blimps. That. They I have know. actual <laughs> blimps. I know, but the characters feel like they're from Chicago. Like, Robert Wool. They they feel that the mobsters feel like Chicago. It just feels like Chicago to me. Monsters. Like mobsters. Oh, mobsters. Organized crime. Okay. But, like, they don't talk in that Chicago accent. I'm just telling you, that's the feeling I got from it. Okay. But I don't think, but like, I don't know. When I, when you look at Gotham, it doesn't look like Chicago So I like this Gala, Gotham. I like the fact that Wayne Manor wasn't Wayne, Wayne Manor. It was Wayne Tower, and it was in the middle of the city. Mm. Like, I liked that change. I never liked the idea that we're going to drive way out of the city to go to Wayne Manor. I like that the Waynes were like old school, wealthy in America. They were right downtown. They own their own building. Mm-hmm. I thought that was kind of a cool change. Mm-hmm. Wayne Industries. Yeah. Well, whatever you want to call it. It's a tower. Yeah. Stark Tower, Wayne Tower. Clearly yeah. here they're so, copying Marvel. Oh, my try God. To... <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. I'm just kidding. They're not necessarily copying uh, Marvel, but uh, I like that yeah. change. The thing is, if this was part of the DCEU, People would probably say this is by far the de- best DCEU. Okay, this movie. isn't DCEU. No, it isn't. I'm Why saying not? if it was. Why not? Because it's not connected. They said it wasn't going to be connected. But DC stuff, no offense, isn't normally all that connected. Yeah, but that's like... 
That's when they have the best ones. Okay. <laughs> when they're not trying to tell a larger story. Yes. Okay. Well, anyway, back to this movie. I liked Gotham. Mm-hmm. Um, I like the way, like I said before, that this is about Batman in Gotham. Mm-hmm. You know, that that was different than those earlier movies. Mm-hmm. Whereas the early movies were, like you said before, Bruce Wayne movies. Yeah. How did you feel about the technology in this movie versus other Batman movies? I think it's better. I like it. Tell me why you think it's better. Because they don't use it as much. Mm-hmm. I think that's like a lot. Because like, I mean... Well, I don't know how much they really used it, but like in like the Christopher Nolan movies, they use technology a lot in that a film. Lot. I feel like, and I don't know. I feel like it was like they have like this whole like massive chase scene, and it was clearly an excuse just to use the Batmobile. Mm. But I really don't care. It was a great scene, like scenes like that where they like kind of use like stuff like that. They didn't overuse it, you know. I liked the low tech tech. Yeah. The only real high tech thing he had, I think, were the contact lenses. Yeah, that, but, that could record like that one seemed yeah. like the highest tech. But those also like were like used for a reason. No, know? they were. But that they was were, the only thing. Yeah. The, the other stuff all seemed like something someone could mm-hmm. just make, and yeah. the Batmobile was just like a muscle car souped <laughs> up. It was like Christine, you but, know, like but, he's driving Christine. Yeah, that's great. Ready. I know. That's why I'm saying I liked it. I agree okay. with you. The the wingsuit that he had did not look that great. Like uh, it did not necessarily look like it would work. Yeah, he only used it once. But I like the lack of yeah. bat tech because yeah. I felt like there wasn't too much technology with Christian Bale's Batman. Like that still seemed like, okay, if you had your own company, they could research and develop some of these things mm-hmm. and they were connecting with the U.S. Yeah, military. Yeah, that is true. But, but there was but, a lot of technology in there. But when you get to Justice League Batman and you're looking at, okay, is this Batman? <laughs> I'm going to say it. Is it Tony Stark? <laughs> I mean, when is the nanotech coming out? (laughs) He's got his own iron suit. It looked like Ironmonger. Well, I I mean, how else is he supposed to fight Superman? I understand the reason for the suit, but I start to feel like, oh, Iron Man really works. He's a billionaire that has this tech, and let's make Batman that, which Batman's always had tech, but... I don't know. It just seemed like it went uh, way too far. I mean, Zack Snyder doesn't really like Marvel movies, so I don't think he was intentionally trying to copy them. Probably not intentionally. No, I think he just wanted there to be cool explosions and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, okay. So I like this low-tech Batman. I like, yeah. the, I like the way the suit looks. Yeah. I like the, the fact that he doesn't use a lot of gadgets in, in the fights, that it's just kind of fist fights. Mm-hmm. It kind of made it fun. Um, so yeah, I, I would say big fan of low-tech yeah. Batman. I mean, if there were machine guns on this, this would be, like, perfect, but, yeah. you know, we, we need, machine guns should be on the muscle car in the next yeah. spinoff. But it was great. <laughs> Just make it a muscle car. Like I said, was it, like, Christine, yeah. a little bit of Fast and Furious in there? Yeah. Like it just But not, not too be, stupid. Not too stupid. It didn't feel like uh, it was something that couldn't be done by somebody with a little bit of mechanical experience. Yeah. Um, okay, so I guess another thing I talk about would be like the side characters, because mm-hmm. there's the penguin, there's Catwoman, uh, there's Falcone, who yeah. Re- yeah, who's like I guess part of the main story, but like not really. Um, yeah, there's like characters like that. Like, what do you think about them? I thought they were all pretty good. I liked the penguin. I mean, I mean he was pretty good. Uh, I liked uh, Catwoman. Um, she was a good character. I mm-hmm. felt like. Uh, I liked Falcone or Falcone. I know the different movies call him different things. I think yeah. in the first Batman, he's Falcone. Here he's Falcone. But I, I liked all the side characters. I didn't think any of them jumped out to me like, wow, that's amazing. In the way that the Joker jumps out in The Dark Knight. Mm-hmm. But I thought they were all pretty good characters. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, I really like the Penguin. I feel like, like when I look at him, I'm like, now this is the type of Penguin I want. Not the one with the really weird makeup and the yeah. eyeliner and stuff, even though in that one he's really good. I, it's just, he looks like how the penguin would kind of look in, like, real life, you yeah. know? No, I agree. It's not like someone who, like, you know, physically, you know, is turning into a penguin, which I yeah. kind of felt like in the early yeah. days. This is one where guy kind of looks like a penguin, so we're just going to call him Penguin. Or You know what I mean? Like, when yeah. he gets a nickname like that, yeah. a little bit more realistic than yeah. the other Batman movies. Yeah, it's kind of like, I think one thing that's great about it, and this is kind of an example of it, and it takes all, like, the really good elements from other Batman movies. Mm-hmm. Like, I feel like a little bit of Nolan vibes from this movie, but also, like, not too much. Like, also, like, kind of gritty Zack Snyder, but also kind of goofy Tim Burton and mm. gothic-like. 
Yeah. You know, there's so many different, like, Batmans and stuff. Like, you can tell Matt Reeves, like, likes Batman, and he probably likes Batman movies, mm -hmm. so he probably, like, kind of took a little bit of elements and just made them better. Right. Well, and took elements from other movies, like I've said. And I'm not the only one to say this, because it's obvious. This is Batman crossed with Seven. So if you really like the movie <laughs> Seven from the 90s, you, you might like this, because it seems like a cross of those elements yeah. as well, those two movies. Also, like, a crossover with The Dark Knight a bit. Yeah, there. Oh, I see elements of the Dark Knight. I mean, but like, I I see a lot more of the original Batman in this. I think than mm, I see the Dark Knight. But I think I see more Dark Knight because, like, I don't know the original Batman. Like he's just like he. I don't know. It's just got this gothic timber and vibe that, like, I mean, I feel like he's going for a little bit more Nolan, a little bit of Snyder, and a little bit of Burton. See, I felt like this one was more gothic, and I think the original Batman is more gothic. I felt like the original Bruce Wayne, Michael Keaton, was supposed to be kind of messed up. You know yeah. what I mean? And I think this Batman's a little bit more psychologically messed up. Where Bale, yeah, maybe he's traumatized, but he doesn't really show it. You know, no. Whereas the original Batman, they tried to show it a little yeah. bit. Well, they showed him Batman Begins pretty well. Yeah, a little bit of that, yeah. So, I don't know, I, but I do agree with you. It's a mixture of some of those best elements. Of the other movies, mm. you know, mixed, rolled into this one. Yeah, yeah. Another thing we should talk about, which we kind of mentioned earlier, is the action scenes. Because mm. the action scenes in this movie, there's not too many, but there's, like, enough to keep you entertained. Mm -hmm. And, like, that that car chase sequence just keeps going on and on and on, and maybe you could debate it goes on for too long, but it's so fun. Yeah, I liked it. I didn't think it went on too long. Yeah. I think that the action sequences here are pretty short. For the most part, yeah. the one I think that maybe, okay, it does, the movie does have that little thing where you think it's kind of over and then the city floods and then you get to this other long action sequence. Like there's mm -hmm. the only point in the movie I felt like, is this going on too long? Are we extending too far? Here? Well, well, I mean, if the Riddler was just like arrested or something like that, then like the best parts of the movie probably wouldn't be there. Probably not. I mean, if did you, so you really like that last action sequence? The last ending, I feel like, because it really, like, shows Bruce's arc. Okay. I think, yeah, I think it was necessary. Like, you're right. For the story, it was probably necessary to have that at the end, mm -hmm. where he's no longer fighting the enemy. He is, but he's more about protecting the people. Yeah. He's not avenging. He's protecting there at the end. Yeah, because, like, his whole thing is, like, I am vengeance. I am the knight. And then in this part of the movie, it's like he's actually, like, helping people. Yeah. Sort of. Yeah. You know. Well, yeah, because the, the villain says I'm vengeance, and he realizes, well, that's what I've been saying, right? Mm -hmm. And so now am I the villain, right? Because there's mm -hmm. a moment where, which one of the coolest scenes I thought in the movie was where he's kind of knocked down, and then he's got to save Catwoman, mm -hmm. but he's so out of it, he has to take like that adrenaline shot and mm -hmm. put it into his leg so he's got the energy to get up and fight, which I thought was pretty cool. But that villain says I am vengeance, and then he realizes, right, that that's the way he must sound mm -hmm. and you know what his mission is mm -hmm. yeah i i think but yeah when it comes to like i mean the whole ending thing with like the riddlers sounds stupid on paper but the way they execute it is somewhat interesting in a way mm -hmm. i don't know it, it i mean i guess we could probably like tie this back to like the riddler mm -hmm. and like what we think about like paul dano as it um I mean, I thought he was great. Probably one of the best comic book villains in like the last ten years that we've gotten. Yeah, I think he was a good villain. That's for sure. the The parts where he's like hiding out in someone's apartment, like at the very beginning, that was creepy. You know, that was pretty good. Yeah, like the opening scene is like the Riddler. Yeah. Like it's like I didn't know what the Riddler looked like at first, so I wasn't fully sure. I was like, saying, like, what is this? Who is this? Is this supposed to be like, I don't know. Like, I didn't know what it was. And then we open up, I'm like, oh. It's like a great opening. It's a great way to get, like, have clear stakes and build tension from that. Well, and you wonder, I think, in that beginning, maybe I was just not paying attention because you see that apartment through the eyes of the Riddler, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And you're wondering, well, are these Batman? Is Batman doing Yeah, this? that's or exactly what I was thinking. So it's, again, that idea that the Batman and Riddler are kind of similar. They spy on people for their own purposes, they punish people for their own purposes. I didn't even notice that. I didn't realize that. Yeah, at least that's what I was thinking. Because th that scene, I was wondering, is this the Riddler watching, or villain watching someone, or is it Batman? And I thought it was Batman. Uh, yeah. You know, because they're kind of connected that way. Yeah. Where they stalk people. 
<laughs> yeah. It, it's just like, it's a great, um, I feel like the Riddler's like, in a way, like he's terrifying in this movie. Yes. Like they made the Riddler, who is supposed to be a goofy comic book character, terrifying. Like they made, like he strikes fear. Yeah. Like in a way, like probably more than the Joker, I'd say. Like in, in like the sense of like having fear. That's an interesting question. Like, who strikes more fear? And and maybe it is the Riddler, but, I mean, the Joker's more interesting. Yeah, the Joker's a better villain, but I feel like, I don't know. I think I'd say that the Riddler's probably the second best Batman villain we've ever gotten in a theater on the big screen. See, here's what separates them to me. They're both terrifying, because yeah. they both, like, kind of are, like, anarchists, or they want to take down the system, and they, mm-hmm. they're not really worried about hurting anyone. But... The Joker has charisma, you know, like Keith yeah. Ledger, the way he plays him, he's, he's, even though he's disturbing, he's charismatic. Whereas the Riddler isn't so much, he's diabolical, but not really charismatic. What you see of him is just like some guy with a mask on and a camera, do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But no style to it, really, at least to me. Mm-hmm. That's how I feel. But, but I think that's what makes him, like, interesting is the fact that, like... Anybody could be this person. Yeah, no, they, they made it very realistic. And even the end scene, the plan that they had to eliminate those citizens of Gotham, it's so realistic, that's what makes it disturbing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That you could draw people to the location and here's your plan. Mm-hmm. Like, that's so real that it, it, it is scary. Yeah, and like, the I, I feel like that interrogation scene in Arkham yeah. is like on par with like the interrogation scene that was in like with the Batman and the Joker. Oh, it's good because you're wondering, does he know... That Bruce Wayne is Batman. Yeah, and it's not just that, but, like, the whole idea and, like, the acting Mm -hmm. to the script to the dialogue to him revealing his entire plan to seeing, like, the difference between them and what is the difference between them. Mm -hmm. And, like, the idea that the the Riddler even thought that the Batman would be on board with this. Mm -hmm. Well, I think, yeah, it was. And it's similar to the Joker scene, right? Because isn't the Joker saying... You know, you're like me, you're not like them. I mean, that's the famous yeah. line. They don't pretend you are because you're not. And it's similar here with the Riddler. So a similar mm-hmm. idea, like we're doing, but took it a step further. Like we're doing this together because you are like me, you're helping me. And we missed one of them. There's one of them we couldn't punish. Mm-hmm. Right. But no, I agree. That was a really good scene. And the idea that you're wondering, does he know? And you yeah. think for a while in that scene that he knows Bruce Wayne is Batman. And you're wondering what's going to happen as a result. What, what's mm-hmm. going to have to be done? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and like the whole idea, like the thing that he realizes, like how Bru- how he says that Bruce Wayne had it somewhat hard, but at, like he had pain, but he wasn't really an actual like struggling orphan that was on the street alone, you know? Right. Like that whole idea, like that the Riddler had to deal with that, and it's like some, it's a part of his character that isn't really like, you know, ever brought up or mentioned. But and I think that's true. Like we feel bad for Batman in all versions. And it, we certainly wouldn't want to wish that upon anyone, but he does fall back into all this money. He still has that wealth. Mm-hmm. You know, it doesn't doesn't make mean his parents are still around, but it would probably be worse, as you're saying, to to lose your parents to be on the street or to have no financial backing at all, mm-hmm. nothing. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. What else is there to talk about? Um, I'm trying to think here. Some of stands. Well, fight scenes. We talked about action scenes, but the fighting style here, I think, is different than the other Batman movies. Mm-hmm. Less ninja, more street brawling. <laughs> I don't think this Batman trained with the League of Shadows. And no, Ra's al Ghul. no, definitely not. He just learned how to punch from Alfred. Is that what we're supposed <laughs> to do in this movie? Like Alfred just taught him how to fight. I mean, probably, yeah. <laughs> I know in Alfred's backstory, he's in the military, so maybe there's some kind of military. Yeah, yeah there's like some way. Like I didn't even like know that was a thing until the Lego Batman movie. Oh, okay. but anyways, I digress. The whole point is like he like. Alfred knows how to, like, like, I guess, and that's how he learned, and, but I mean, like, he, I mean, he still, like, still knows how to fight, though. Yeah, he does, but it, it's, like, I'm just gonna punch people really hard multiple <laughs> times. I mean, I like, I'm not saying I didn't like it, I'm just saying it was very different than, you know, the, I'm gonna appear suddenly and disappear suddenly and drop out of the sky suddenly, <laughs> you know, that's ninja stuff. No ninja here. Yeah. Which... No, he tasers a guy into the head. <laughs> yeah, it's in the very, opening scene. It's just very different. It's very UFC. It's not <laughs> MMA. Yeah, MMA. It's not 
you know, it's, there's no Ra's al Ghul here pulling the strings. No, uh, that no, was clear. Definitely not. And whatever, <laughs> whatever tech the bat suit is, whatever kind of bulletproof tech, that's amazing because uh, he okay. gets shot so many times. <laughs> okay, and it doesn't even slow that, him down. That's probably like the only like decently big problem with the movie is the fact that he gets hit by a bomb and there's like no like blood coming out. There's no injuries. He's fine. But he's shot so many times. Even I think with one scene, there's automatic weapons. <laughs> That has the, that's the best bulletproof vest I've ever seen, you know, because it, it doesn't a, doesn't phase him at all. Shotgun to the chest, barely knocks him down. So, but yeah. I liked the fight scenes, even though, yeah, you're right. If we're picking nits here, that's, that's yeah, the, uh, like he gets hit by a bomb. Yeah. He he gets machine gunned. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's there's a lot. But but the stuff all looked cool. And again, like the whole cool. visual of the movie was cool. Yeah, kind of like something like Snyder would do, but like not stupid. I'm glad you said it and not me. It, it does. You know, you think of like two movies that I saw this last year um, that were visually stunning, Dune and this movie. They both were like visually amazing. And yeah. I think Zack Snyder's Justice League in this movie. No. Come on. Oh, yeah. No. That's, a, that's an argument for a different day. I when you no, act- no credit. That's an argument for a different day when you've seen the whole thing. But I think year two, this is like, I mean, people have said this before, that there's a Batman year one graphic novel yeah. that shows him trying to figure it all out. Mm-hmm. This isn't year one. It's like year two or year three where he's got some things figured out but struggling. And, mm-hmm. and I think that whole vibe makes it a good movie. Yeah, and also hints at the fact that he's not, li- I guess it's like at the beginning, like it's like he's Rorschach. Yeah. You know, like the the journal one. Yeah. He is like a dark voice. Yeah. Like he has that for like a lot of it, even when he doesn't have the best. The opening scene was like, was oh, it yeah. the opening scene where it's like in the city and I am fear and they don't know where I am? Yeah. But that was very Rorschach. That, that was, was, but like it was also great. It was a great way to open Rorschach's it. Rorschach's journal. <laughs> that's what it was it, it was right? a great way to open it though like this idea of, like see, hearing Batman with the voiceover and then hearing him say like how much like the Batman strikes fear into criminals mm-hmm. well it's Batman as a deterrent Batman acknowledges I can't stop everyone that's realistic like you can't the city's too big there's too much crime but if people know I'm out there and they're not sure where I'm gonna be or when I'm gonna be there mm-hmm. maybe it makes them think twice mm-hmm. and that's the power of the symbol that's fear mm-hmm. for criminals so I thought it was a really good way to explain that in a very short period of time mm-hmm. and so it was a great way to open the movie yeah and then there's like I I think we ha- there's one thing we haven't touched on which mm-hmm. is the visuals yeah the visual Gotham looks beautiful yep and not like exactly beautiful and like like pretty like what's a, what's a movie that like looks like you know beautiful visually well I thought Dune was a beautiful yeah. movie yeah it's not like Dune yeah. it's not like Dune it's more like what's a good example of this I would say the Snyder movies but you know I'm gonna pick that yeah they're, they're not Um, but it does kind of look like that in a way mm-hmm. I, I guess it it has a gothic vibe as well to it. Yeah. Uh, was I mean, Edward Scissorhands, any timber and movie you could think of. Yeah. No, it's got that feel to it. It looks great. It really yeah, does. It, it looks great. It looks, it looks believable, but also like a place that's not really in America or on this planet. And, different though. Yeah. And I think that's what DC always like goes for. Like they always go for like Marvel's thing is like they want things to feel like it's exactly in our world. Yeah. So they pick real locations. DC's whole thing is like they want it to feel otherworldly. And I really, and, well, and I think this is their best job. I, I think this is my favorite DC movie. Like DC, EU, DC, I don't know. It's, I don't think it's part of the D6. But, but whatever it is, it's probably my favorite DC yeah. movie. And that's the weird thing. It's like anytime, like, apparently they do, like, a movie that's outside of the cinematic universe, they get, like, tons and tons of praise for it. Mm-hmm. Like, I haven't seen The Joker, but I've heard, like, many people, like, love it mm-hmm. or, like, at least can't think it's good. Mm hmm. And, like, it's probably, like, it, it was a Best Picture nominee. It was very much, like, praised right. for what what it was doing. And I feel like that's the thing. DC just, honestly, if they just started making solo movies and they stopped the DCEU completely, mm. I would not mind that at all. Well, I think this is something that Marvel's just better at. Yeah. They're better at connecting elements to a larger story. Mm. That really goes back to the comic books. Uh, their teams are better than the teams that are in DC traditionally, I would say. Their long story arcs mm-hmm. with team ups, you know, those partnerships. Mm-hmm. It's just a history of that in Marvel. They're just better at doing it. I think when DC tries to string these movies together, it feels forced and it feels like there's no overall plan. Yeah. And so it gets messy. Yeah, I feel like the thing is, if they're going to build up to something big like Apocalypse War, like anything like that, anything with a big, big event, 
they have to like start from the ground up, you know. They have to take their time. Yeah, that I I think if they were to do something like that, they should reboot it. Love or hate Marvel, they took their time. They did take their time. They took their time and they put all these things in place and then yeah. the payoff mm-hmm. again was pretty good. At least it was better than anything DC's tried yeah. to do that way for sure. Yeah, cuz like I feel like honestly, if they started a whole like cinematic universe with the Batman and like they just start from the ground up, maybe have like the Joker connected or something. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's the Joker from 2019. They, this will probably not happen. Right. At all. But if it does, I would not mind it because it's in a way starting something new and they're starting from like the ground up. Well, that would have made sense. So they tried to start with Superman and the results, I'm going to say, are mixed, you know. And then instead of giving Batman his own movie, they went right to Batman v Superman. And I feel like that was a mistake. Yeah, it was a mistake. You know. Because like people will, like there's people that love Batflick and I think he could have been a good Batman if like they... You know, took their time first. Yep. Like, I don't mind them starting with an older Batman. I think that's a great idea. I mean, there's, like, The Dark Knight Returns, that which is a comic that many people love. And, like, I've read the first part of it, and it was amazing. I I gotta finish it. But the whole point is, like, like, I think if they decide, if they do that, I would love that. Even starting that way. Mm -hmm. But you have to focus on Batman. Right. Well, what's really interesting is like two of the most famous Batman stories of all time are The Dark Knight Returns, the old Batman, Mm -hmm. and Batman Year One, the young Batman. And it's interesting, showing Batman those two ways, it's just interesting, versus middle-of-the-road Batman, I've got everything figured out, unless you have a really good story, you know, a really good villain, that's going to be hard to portray. Yeah, like like Death in the Family or something like that. Right, right. But yeah, I think there's so many things they can do with this. I want a sequel. I want something because if they're gonna tease the Joker, you gotta give us at least a trilogy. Come I want on. a sequel, but it makes me a little bit worried. Why? Well, because uh, again, sequels the track record is not great. But like with the Batman, the sequels always normally good. Well, that's true. I guess Dark Knight Returns. No, not Dark Knight Returns. Batman Returns. Yeah, Batman. That's returns. pretty good. Um, the Dark Knight, okay, that's good. So maybe they'll keep that going. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, I think they can. I think if as long as they give Matt Reeves the, the amount of control he's had and they just, you know, let everything... As long as DC just lets everything play out like they did the first time, they could, ma- they could have something great on their hands. And I think they could make, who knows, maybe a trilogy, maybe, like, a whole new franchise. Maybe they start, like... I don't know, maybe they bring in, like, other different characters. Maybe they start bringing in, um, let's say, like, maybe something that we've never seen before. Maybe they bring in Clayface, you know? Get get creative with it. Maybe. You know? I mean, of course, you gotta find a way to make it grounded, which that's hard. Yeah. That's obviously hard. Like, because the problem with Batman is his characters, his rogues gallery is great. You're always gonna know you can have, like, potential for a great villain. The problem is fitting all those different villains into one right. universe. Here's my worry. So yes, they tease the Joker in at the end of this movie. Mm-hmm. Do we need to go back to the Joker? Can we go another direction? But this... Because immediately when you when you tease the Joker, now there's this. I mean, you're competing <laughs> with Heath Ledger. You're bringing up uh, Jared Leto. Like it, you just there's a lot of other characters out there. Why not go in a different direction? They did it with the Riddler here, and I thought that was smart. But now it's like, okay, we got to Batman Begins didn't have the Joker, but the Dark Knight had the Joker. That was the sequel. And so now we're going to go to the Joker? I just feel like that might be a mistake. Because even if... Is it, I can't remember that Barry Keoghan... I can't remember the actor's name. Neither can I. But even if he's amazing, man, he's going to take some criticism. Oh, no, he will. Definitely. The thing is, though, the Joker is a part of Batman. Like, he was one of his first villains ever. I understand that. He was... He's, like, in a way, is, like... The Joker, in a way, is the Batman. You okay. can't have one without the other. Okay, but I'm gonna say this. Peter Parker and Uncle Ben always have to have the Uncle Ben story. You can you can break away from that. You the only have... problem... But that's a massive criticism for a lot of people with I'm the MCU. Saying, well, I'm saying you can break away from it. You don't have to do it again. <laughs> I appreciated this Batman movie for not showing Bruce Wayne's parents get murdered... But now they're going back to the Joker. And it better be good. That's all I'm going to say. Otherwise, you know, they're going to get criticized. But I do want a sequel because I like this Batman. Mm -hmm. I like this world. I'd like to go back there. It was fun to watch. Yeah. I think the thing is they have to find either characters that can fit into this world, like fit perfectly into this world, 
or they have to have the force them into this world in a way, like kind of like blend them in, mm-hmm. like kind of what they do with the Riddler. Because let's be honest, no one thought the Riddler was gonna be like this. Like I was thinking, oh, the Riddler, like Rid, like I mean that would be interesting because of course this is gonna, this is based on the long Halloween comic very loosely and. It's interesting because, well, you know, the Riddler's kind of like that. And, of course, I'm, I'd be excited to see him, but he was in Batman Forever. It was really just Jim Carrey. That's true. We haven't seen him in a while. Yeah. And it wasn't like this Riddler was competing against Jim Carrey. Because oh, no. That, those performances were not good. He was trying to go beyond that. Yeah, very, very different. But I just worry, how do you top Heath Ledger? And if you don't top Heath yeah. Ledger, you know, well, you know, I don't know, does it, does it hurt the movie? But, I mean, hey... They, in the Dark Knight Rises, they were able to top the amazing Bane from Batman and Robin. So they were able to uh, maybe. <laughs> I'm not 100 yeah. percent sure they did. <laughs> I'm really not. I'm thinking back. I'm not 100 <laughs> percent that that the, Bane was better. Uh, the, the thing is, though, I mean, the, if yeah, of course they're gonna compete with it, and they gotta top it, which is hard because I mean the issue with that though is the fact that. The Joker is like one of the most important Batman villains. I get it. That's yeah. why they're doing it. I just am worried. Yeah, it's like the same thing with like, what's a Spider-Man villain that frequently pops up? Oh, um, well, the Green Goblin pops up. Yeah. yeah that's, that's kind of a standard. I mean, there's a lot of standard ones, but that's yeah. what Doc Ock is a standard, you know, yeah. villain. You know. Yeah. And that's the thing. It's like the Green Goblin is like massively connected to Peter Parker and yep. such. And maybe that'll, maybe they go in that direction. They probably will not. But the, my point is, it's like, I guess they just feel like they have to include these characters. And maybe you don't need them. In a way, the Batman doesn't need the Joker, but the Joker needs the Batman. No, well, I know the movies don't necessarily need the Joker. This one kind of proved it. Yeah, th- to th- me. that's true. That is true. What was the other thing you wanted to talk about besides this movie? Or was that it? Just Oh, yeah. Like, I guess... Oh, apparently there's going to be like some sort of Penguin oh, yeah. miniseries on HBO Max or something like that. I'm not fully sure, but I guess this was kind of like going to, we should kind of talk about what direction are they really going to take with this, you know? The Penguin series? Or just in general. Like, I, what are they going to do? I gotta say, I like the Penguin as a character, but I'm not a huge fan of these uh, villain-centric movies or villain-centric Series, because I just don't know what I'm gonna get from that. Mm-hmm. Do I want to see the penguin just being a mobster in Gotham? I don't know. But that'd be somewhat interesting in a way. I think the thing is though, the penguin will probably show up in the second movie if we get a second movie. That's that will sort of bait. Are we actually gonna get a sequel? Yeah. I hope we, we probably will, because they wouldn't have teased the Joker. Yeah. So I is don't penguin think. gonna be like an anti-hero? Is this gonna be like? DC's version of the Sopranos on HBO. I, I just I don't. would I would get that joke if I have actually seen the yeah, Sopranos. Yeah, you haven't seen the Sopranos, but yeah. but I wonder about that. I you know the the Marvel movies or Sony movies or everyone to call them where like Venom's the main character, they don't work very well. Um, well, what do you think about the Joker? Oh, the movie The Joker. Yeah. I, I liked it, but it wasn't really a comic book movie at all. But it wasn't supposed to be, right? No, it wasn't. That there's yeah. there's one maybe that worked. Yeah, I can't say anything about it because I haven't seen it. But the, I was just asking you because, I mean, but yeah, I don't like the main thing. character, and it's not something I would watch every week. It was an interesting movie, mm-hmm. you know. But I it wasn't like I really liked that yeah. main character. He's despicable. But what about the masterpiece known as Peacemaker? I have not watched much of Peacemaker. I have no desire. Not a fan of James Gunn's Suicide Squad or the other Suicide yeah. Squad. I don't get how you didn't like Suicide Squad. There's just no. I don't. It's hard to say. It's like a. It's like a, a sandwich with no meat. It's just like it's just fluff. It has no meaning to it. Yeah, it's funny, but there's nothing there for me. I don't. The characters, none of them seem real. None okay. of them seem like anyone I want to relate to because it seems like satire. Mm. And not great satire, to be honest. That's just my opinion, though. Okay, that's fair. I I guess we'll just like kind of like because we're we're getting a bit off topic. We, yeah, yeah. We're, should, we, should we bring it home here? Yeah, let's just kind of like somewhat like you know kind of get it going a little bit more and then just kind of end it. Okay. Um. But yeah. Over. I mean, I think I just I don't kn- know my opinion on it. I feel like I like the pink one, and you know I want to see him in a second movie. Maybe he's the villain. If he is in a second movie, but I don't think a spinoff is the way to go. Yeah, I'm not Get, a fan. Give the people what they want. They don't want this Penguin miniseries. We want a Batman 2. Yeah. Maybe even a 3, you yeah. know? That's what's going to stick, 
You know, that's what's going to stick to this generation. This new generation that's going to grow up with these movies and grow up with this Batman. But this is the Disneyfication of HBO. Like, what does Marvel do with Disney? They have main movies, and then they spin off into series, and then they can put those series on HBO Max, which is their version of Disney+, Plus, mm -hmm. and continue the hype and the product going. That's what I see this. I see Peacemaker the same thing. You take a movie property, you spin it off into a series, you're trying to compete with Disney, which has done that now multiple times with mm -hmm. their Marvel characters. And, you know, that's probably just the business model. You know, that's yeah. how they're going to make money off this. That is a business model. But if they end up doing a TV series and they don't make a sequel... I think they'll do the sequel. They, they probably will. They better. Because... You know, well, because isn't the, isn't the TV series building hype towards the sequel? Probably. Probably. <laughs> yeah. That's probably the whole point of it. I don't see the Penguin show... I Maybe it'll be something special, you know? I guess it depends. If people seem to really like it, maybe I'll hop on it and just, like, give it a chance. Yeah. You know? But it's not going to be coming out for a while, if we're being honest. Yeah. But if it does become good, you know, maybe I'll like it. Maybe I'll enjoy it and just check it out. Um, but, you know, I guess we'll just see. Because yeah, we'll wait and see. This is a Batman movie that I think, you know, it's going to speak to a generation, you know? So overall, mm -hmm. if you were ranking your top three Batman movies, top three, yeah. only three, what are they then? What are they? Um... I think number three, I think that goes to either Batman Begins or the Lego Batman movie, I'd say is one of the two. And then the second one is the Batman, then number one, The Dark Knight. Our lists are similar. I would go three, Batman Begins, uh, two, The Dark Knight, and number one, The Batman. Yeah. I, I know a lot of people like the original Batman. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not as big of a fan of that movie as some other people. Yeah. The the 89 Batman. That That's fair. I like it. I just think there's a lot of problems with it. It's just a little bit too corny for me at times. Yeah. I can't take that. Yeah. But I feel like this is a movie that's going to like speak to like, you know, not exactly speak, but like it's going to be like a movie that like for my generation and younger, like it's going to be like movies that they're going to grow up with and then show their kids. And, like, it's going to be, like, you know, a Batman movie that we're going to all, you know, love and, mm. like, care about and, like, show love for it. And if they do make a couple more, I feel like it'll be, like, a, like a franchise that we're all going to, like, that we're just going to, like, talk about. And, like, once I'm, like, older, I'm going to show to my kids and then we're just... It's just going to be something special. It could be. It seems like every generation gets their Batman. Yeah. Because, like, then there's, like, yours was, I'd say, like, wasn't it the 60s Batman? Or when like, I was a little kid, that's what was on TV. Yeah. But then when you were older, there's the 1989 Batman, yep. which is for, I guess, micro-gens or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> which yeah. it's, it's around that. And then for, like, millennials or, like, old, or like young Gen X is... Um, of course, the Schumacher ones. Oh, yeah, yeah, I suppose. And then for me, it would probably, even though, like, of course, this is part of my generation, but, like, what I watched when I was young, when I was, like, a little bit younger was, like, the Nolan ones. Mm -hmm. And then now there's this one. What about Batfleck? Where does he fit, isn't uh, Isn't he your generation? I guess technically, yes, but let's be honest... I don't know what generation he'd fall into. I guess it's kind of part of it, but at the same time, let's be honest. If you're, I guess like it was because like I guess it was just for me because like the Nolan ones were like the ones you showed me. Yeah, those were the ones I watched. True. Okay. So yeah, but anyways, that's kind of sidetracking. Batman, great movie, of should course. Go see it. I mean, I, we basically kind of spoiled it, but you either way, you should go see it. That's true. See it again. Um, yeah, I'll probably see it again. And that's gonna be it.